Hey friends, this is Rachel Picard and this is episode 11 of the Soul CEO podcast. Today's a little bit something special. I decided to share a snippet of a private call that we did for our team tonight and to talk about how to begin showing up in your business Uh, your posture, your energy, your goals, your vision, and how you can begin doing the hard things. If you're loving this podcast at all, I would appreciate if you subscribe. And I know you don't have to, but leave a review, five stars, share it with your team, and tag me on Instagram at the Rachel Picaric or on Facebook at Rachel Picaric. And I'd love to connect with you there. So hope you enjoy today's episode and I'll talk with you soon. Thank you so much, Amanda. Man, after Holly, I was like, okay, call's over. That's enough. That's all we needed. Sign, seal, delivered. I'm like, I'm not crying. You're crying, Holly. I'm super proud of you. And it is evident that you are showing up in your business. It's evident that you're showing up in the fact that you have enrolled dozens upon dozens upon dozens of people in the last 90 days, that you have not turned this pandemic, if if anything, you have made it work for you, and it is clear that you know your vision, and I know we are going to be celebrating you at Pro 5 in a hop, skip, and a jump. It's going to be a glorious Zoom. We're all going to raise our hats and toast to you, so thank you so much for being on your very last minute, Amanda, as always, phenomenally, to show up and lead the call. Today's guy's conversation is showing up. Show me your pen. Show me your piece of paper. Do not trust your memory. I will tell you guys that 30 minutes after this Zoom, 30 minutes after this call, you're going to be, you're going to forget almost everything that I said. The dog's going to be barking. The kid's going to be crying. Somebody's going to be yelling. You know, there's going to be all these notifications. You're going to be winding down for the night and you're going to forget. So take notes. The best leaders are excellent students. Tonight, we're gonna talk about showing up in your business. And I need to ask you, how are you showing up? How are you showing up? I can see a lot of you guys are now on my screen. I love the the grid view on Zoom because I like to see you. I like to like look at your face. I can see your background. Like Charlene is like all decorated and blinged out. Nicole's like rocking the you know the t- turquoise walls. You know, Mama Seat has got the cute little like you know old hundred year old farmhouse like old Victorian that she lives in craftsman style home in the middle of nowhere, Wisconsin. Some of you guys are in your, like your kitchen. Josette is in bed. Gail's always in her kitchen. I'm like that is so convenient that your fridge is like right there. I could not work there. I I'd be 400 pounds. I'd be a 600 pound. I'd be on that show, my 600 pound life. And you guys would have to like literally cut me out of my house. If my, if my fridge, I am purposefully in the bedroom that is the furthest away from my fridge. Otherwise I would not stop eating. Anybody else like just, just me? Oh, all right. Okay. So I want to see, I want to see how are you showing up? How are you showing up in your posture? I'm looking at some of you guys right now. Like Holly, look at her. She is straight up. Like she is there. It's not just posture and confidence. Like how are you showing up with your energy? How are you showing up to this business with your preparation? Like do you have your journal? Do you have your pen? Some of you guys got all the different highlighter colors because you love to like make it all pretty and doodle and like you want to circle stuff and underline things. Like are you showing up prepared or is this one of those things where you got a notification two seconds before the call and you're like, oh, mm, oh. I guess I'm I'm kind of in bed right now, but uh, I guess I'll turn it on and kind of see if something is good tonight. Or are you showing up with an Annie to play, like expectant to learn? How are you showing up with your commitment? How are you showing up with your commitment? Like how important is Monday night for you? Now, I want to congratulate to those of you guys that are on the line watching live and on, on the Zoom here. Like, you're here tonight, but how important is it every single week to show up for your business? How important is it? What's the commitment on Saturdays to be on the Saturday Success Mastery? Like, how important is that to you? Do you prioritize it? You know, does your posture, does your energy, does your preparation, does your commitment, are they congruent with what you say you want in your life? Is your posture, your energy, your preparation, your commitment, is it congruent with what you say that you want? Like this call every Monday night, to give you guys an idea, if you're at all new, the minimum that our speakers make is 10,000 a month. They're rolling in 100,000 a year. At the maximum, they're making over $2 million a year. That's a lot of tacos. That's a lot of tacos. And this is free training. 
every single Monday night to grow your business and it's only going to get better. I remember when I got started network marketing 14 years ago, this is before Zoom, before face-to-face, -face, before webinars, we had a free conference call HD. You guys remember? Free conference call. Dot com. And we'd log in and we had like an 18 digit pin code. We put it on and you have to like press star to mute yourself, press star to unmute everybody. Like it was so complicated. And I remember sitting in like my, my little home office, a little spare bedroom at the time and like expectant. It was called the money call on Monday night. Mama C, to remember those money calls every Monday night? We get onto the money call and we're like, we are learning how to make money. We are showing up. Now, if we think about showing up, the first thing you have to do to show up is figure out why. Why? Why show up, right? You have to set a goal. You have to set a vision. Now, because it is still January, I still feel like we can talk new year, new me. New year, new me. As, as Amanda was saying, I got a new Instagram, you know, at the Rachel Picard. New year, new me. Hello, I'm here. But that goal, that vision that you have for this year or for your life, maybe it's a five-year goal. Maybe you have a three-year goal. Maybe you broke it down into a one-year goal, a six-month goal, a one-month goal. That goal, that vision that you have, it needs to be irresistible. The vision that you have for your life, it needs to be irresistible. It's got to pull at your heartstrings. Like Holly gets emotional. You heard it going up in, in her throat from her heartstrings because the vision is so clear. Have you written it down? Have you written down the vision so clear? Did you do write it down? Put it on sticky notes. Make a vision board. Shout out to Jenny Mallon and Tanya Plant who wrote who did a vision board masterclass for their teamies this weekend. Totally optional. Teaching them how to make a vision board. Put it on the background of your phone. I don't care. Make a Pinterest board. You're like, I don't want to buy a ton of magazines. Fine. Go to Pinterest. You can go make a visual vision board on Pinterest for free. Put it on a lock screen where you want to be, what you want to have, what you want to do. When you look at that goal and you pine for that goal and you know that that's the vision of what God has put on your heart, then you look at your posture, your energy, your preparation, your commitment, and you see, is it congruent? And if it's not congruent, then it's time to show up. It's time to show up. It's time to reprioritize your business. And to make it at the forefront. Because on Monday night here, I kind of almost want to relaunch it and call it something else. Team Art Weekly Zoom. Oh, gosh. I mean, it, it's true. It is. It's, t it's a tactical name. But some, of the, some part of me wants to call it like, this is the success Zoom. This is the achievement Zoom. This is the VIP Zoom. This is the MVP Zoom. Like, this is the Zoom that you go to reach higher uh, levels. This is where you come to up-level your mindset, your skill, skill set, and your leadership. Now, Monday nights, guys, we're not talking about this business in, in, in this company as a hobby. There's a lot of things you could do on Monday night. You could be watching The Bachelor. You could be watching, I don't know, what's, what's everyone talking about on Netflix? Netflix, like Bridgerton or something? It's like some sort of like Gossip Girl meets Pride and Prejudice. I don't know. Like me, I don't have Netflix. I'm uh, not even giving them a dollar, but... You know, you could be there instead, but we are here right now. We've showed up to build a business. So are you showing up with full intention? See, you're going to have a ton of obstacles. You're going to have a lot of distractions. You may already be feeling stretched to the max, but this is when you weigh out something good or something pleasurable or something numbing out or dumbing out for something far greater in the future. This is the time to say, I'm going to pass on that. I'm going to pass on the distraction. I'm going to pass on the Netflix. I'm going to pass on saying yes to a million people so I can say yes to my legacy. Is this, this is the year, I hope, where are my people pleasers at? Raise your hand. Where's my people pleasers? Amanda, I see you. Gail, I see you. Okay, Nicole. And some of you guys are so cute. You're like so shy about it. Like your, your hand was like just right there. How many guys are you? Where's the people pleasers at? All right. I'm a recovering people pleaser. This year, I'm going to give you guys permission. I'm going to give you permission so therefore you can give yourself permission to start saying no to the things that are taking up too much of your time, your focus, and your energy. My papa Frida, my dad calls them life units, LUs. You only have so many life units. Where are you going to spend them? 2021 is the year where you say enough of that. I know I promised her this. 
I know Auntie Susie always wants me volunteering. I know little Johnny wants to be in hockey and basketball and archery and badminton and chess and soccer. But let's be honest, like, he's going to choose one. Because you know he's not going to build his legacy uh, at being a mediocre athlete. But you, 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 you are holding on to something special. You have something special in your hands right now with this business, and that is not selfish. In fact, it is selfish to put that business in a box. It's selfish to put it back on the shelf. It's selfish to keep saying no to the dream that God has placed in your heart. It is selfish for you to spend time here on Monday night and then not execute and show up the other 160 plus hours in the week. It's counting the cost of showing up in this business and taking it more serious than you ever had before. Because I want you to know that this year could change the entire trajectory of your life. And not only for your life, but the life of your children and their children. That is what network marketing does. Why am I still after 14 years so excited about network marketing? Guys, because there's no glass ceiling. There's no cap on your income. Nobody can say, oh, well, you know... You've, you've hit your payload this year. You don't, you don't qualify for another raise. You don't qualify for another promotion. That's what I love about network marketing. Like network marketing doesn't care if you have speeding tickets. If you have a DUI from years back, it doesn't matter if you're a felon. It doesn't matter if you have a college education. It doesn't even matter if you have a high school graduation certificate. It doesn't matter. You don't need a diploma. I had in my previous company... A gentleman, young gentleman, he's now in his 30s, he's now married with a, with a daughter, he was dating his wife, uh, that now wife, girlfriend at the time, joined my business with a check he received in the mail from the Canadian government. He had no money to join. He got a check in the mail, decided to buy the $600 kit, the $500 kit, got started, and within a year, he was making six figures, he was a high school dropout, had a ninth grade education. And he's continued on to make hundreds of thousands of dollars per year inside and outside of this industry. Network marketing doesn't care if you have a college education. It doesn't care if you came from a broken family. It doesn't care. It doesn't care if you grew up in a double white trailer. It doesn't care if you grew up without a mom or without a dad. Like All this business demands is that you show up and that when you do... And you do over and over and over and over. It will pay you richly. So what is your goal? What is your vision? What is the dream life? Have you gotten so crystal clear? I am a pinch me person. I'm a pinch me every day that I cannot believe that I was on the struggle bus for so many years inside of network marketing, but showing up and showing up and showing up. And now I live a pinch me life. Uh, pinch me autonomy. I do what I want, when I want, where I want, with who I want to do it with. And you deserve that. And you can have that. There's nothing special. Uh, there's nothing special about me. I'm not normal. But there's nothing super special. Number two, in showing up, you have to decide that you're going to work harder. And you got to decide to be world class. You've heard me say it a million times, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. It's one of my favorite quotes. Hard, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Oh my gosh. And when hard work meets talent, whoo, all bets are off. There's like, there's no stopping you. There's no stopping when the talent finally catches up because you showed up. I think about people like the greats, Michael Jordan. I watched a documentary about Michael Jordan and he told his college basketball coach, uh, it was Roy Williams, who was like a legend. He said that he wanted to be the best player to ever play at UNC. Now, mind you, UNC had already won an NCAA championship. They won like two dozen conference championships before Michael Jordan had even arrived. Okay. Williams uh, told the young Jordan that he would have to work even harder than he did in high school to accomplish that goal if he wanted to be the best. Now, mind you, Jordan didn't even make the varsity basketball team till he was a junior in high school. Till he hit a growth spurt. And Jordan responded to Coach Williams and he said he'd work as hard as anybody else on the high school on, on his high school team. And the coach said to him, Excuse me? 
I thought you just told me you wanted to be the best player here, the best player to ever play here. And Jordan responded with an intense promise, like intense. He goes, I'm going to show you. No one will ever work as hard as me. Now, my parents taught me about hard work. I remember both of my parents saying, you can have everything that you want if you're willing to work hard at it. Right, Mama Sita? You can have anything you want as long as you work hard on it. Like, they would encourage you, like, you don't have to be the smartest, the prettiest, the most talented because you can beat them with pure brute force and effort. Ten years ago, this February, I relaunched myself in a wellness company, a weight loss company, and I found a mentor. You might have heard of her. Her name is Tara Wilson. How many guys know Monkey? Shout out, hashtag Monkey, right? She had what I want. She was 90 days in the business making $10,000 a month. I was one minute in the business making nada. I was, I was at, I was at rank zero, making zero. In fact, I was already negative a thousand dollars because I'd spent a thousand dollars to join that business. And I asked her what to do. I said, I'll do it. I said, give me the plan. And I did it. That's all I did. I didn't do very much else for seven months. I worked hard. I was, I was desperate. I was like, I was so hungry to become world class. And in seven months, I put my head down and seven months later, I raised it up and I was making 50 grand a month. I was a five-star quote unquote rank, a prestigious rank in that company within 16 months of showing up hard work, becoming world class. I became the highest paid female in that company at 27. Again, I just told you, I am not average I'm not normal. (laughs) Nothing about me is normal. I'm not average. Guys, I'm like nearly six foot tall and 70% legs. I'm essentially a giraffe. Like I'm loud on calls, but if you get around me in person, I'm quite introverted. I'm quite introverted. I am insanely competitive, but not at the risk of hurting somebody else. I mean, I want to win, but my intense blue side of my personality, which is like really tender hearted, I will bleed for other people. So it's strength and it's meekness. Like I cry guys, like I am tender hearted. I'm a lot softer than you think. I will never yell at you. Like I just like, I am like way more emotional than you think. Like I, but I'm competitive. I have worked so hard. I've gone to the top of nearly every career job that I had. I became the number one salesperson in a vitamin store. I moved to Arizona, worked for another wellness company. I turned their redheaded stepchild store from zero, literally bleeding cash, to the number one store in their district of 11 stores in 90 days. I got recruited into a sports nutrition company about an hour north. I worked at that store and I did the exact same thing. Took them from 18,000 a month in sales to 30,000 a month in 90 days. In 2009, I went from having um, a job. I went to go back and I had to go back to work because my network marketing was not for profit. So I had to go back and get a job and I went to sell for the number one online lender and I became the number one selling mortgage broker. I was six months old, never done mortgage before. The number one mortgage broker in that site of 200 men, seven women. Two, I'd never done this before. I was selling $5 million a month in loans and I was closing 22 loans a month. Beat out an entire site, smoked them. Why? Was I that great? No. I came in an hour earlier than everyone else. Work started at nine. It went to six. I came in at eight. I didn't leave till eight. I was working half days. Ha ha ha. Get it? I was working 12 hour days. I was winning in half days. I would come in. I would stay Friday night while every other 27 year old guy, which was all pretty much every single mortgage broker and banker at that site, They'd go to Old Town Scottsdale to go party it up. And I would stay with my little headset in my little half cubicle because I didn't even have a full cubicle. I was in like a little half in like a corner. And I would take uh, app calls, application calls. There were DDCCs, drunk dialing with credit cards. These people on Friday night were having some beer at home. They saw a commercial. They called Quicken Loans. And here I was, Rachel, hello, I'd love to give you a 3.99% interest rate. Would that be credit or visa or visa? (laughs) Ha, 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 ha. Seriously, I came in most Saturdays. I came in most Saturdays. 
And in fact, what's insane is every week I would sit down with one of my directors. This was an optional thing. I'd sit down with one of my directors and they would pull a call clip from the previous week, one of my applications, one of my follow-ups, and we would dissect what I said. We would dissect the scripts. We would dissect everything. I was so intentional becoming world class. Now, the hard work is so much more beyond the business, the system that we follow here. It's so much more than just talking to people, send them to a simple message, following up and enroll. It is beyond the business. It's the hard work inside. It's the hard work internally. And in the last 14 years, I've become fixated and or obsessed with self-development. Because I realized that if I worked harder on myself than I did on my business, I would be unusually successful. That's a quote by Jim Rohn. One of the first quotes I ever remember, and it didn't make sense to me. It didn't make sense. I was like, I wanted to fight it tooth and tooth and nail. And guys, I work really hard on my business, but I work harder on myself. Why? Because people join you. Now, Holly might say, hey, I'm leading with the hair care. Hey, I'm leading with these products. Hey, I'm leading with the gateway drug, (laughs) our little energy sticks. I'm leading with all that. But truthfully, what she's doing, she's showing heart, she's showing her integrity, she's showing consistently, she is working her butt off in the few hours a week between being a hairdresser and being a secretary and having a whole farm. How many animals did you just say you had? I mean, legit. You got to show up. Showing up is understanding that success is uphill. Number three, success is uphill. John C. Maxwell taught me, the number one leadership guru in the world, that if you're coasting in life, You're either losing momentum or you're going downhill. If you're coasting in this business, I've got a newsflash for you. You're going downhill fast. Building is energy. Maintaining is fatigue. When somebody tells me that their goal for the month, I like they just hit pro three. They're like, I just hit ring three. I just hit ring five, whatever. I want to maintain this next month. I'm like, oh, God. Oh, what? Maintaining is fatigue. Building is energy. This is why I have made a commitment. The legends have heard it. The legends have heard it. Instagram has heard it. My podcast is hearing it. I have made a commitment to be in a massive building mode. This is why my energy is 10 out of 10 and it's 9 or 8.31 p.m. Central Standard Time. This is why I can't even sometimes go to bed at night because my brain is constantly going with what I can do to improve and to serve and be better for all of you guys. I am in build mode. Are you? Are you showing up at the same build mode? Now, success is uphill. One of my favorite pastimes is hiking. I love it. I used to live in Arizona um, once for five years then again for three years. Really excited. I get to go spend about six, seven weeks down there. We're going to snowbird part of this winter. So we leave right around Valentine's Day, come back in April. And one of my favorite hikes in Arizona and Scottsdale, I've done it a bazillion times, is called Pinnacle Peak. Pinnacle Peak is not an insanely hard hike. It's not an insanely hard hike, but it's not for the faint of heart either. There's a lot of ups and downs, and there's a couple of like plateaus, and you go up and down again. And then when you go down to the bottom, you have to come all the way back up again before you get to back to the trailhead. If you've ever hiked, if you've ever hiked, have you ever seen people come off of a mountain? What do they look like? They're excited. They're like full of energy. They're smiling. They got like some pep in their step, right? You don't see them like moping off the mountain, totally like depressed that they did it. No, they just scaled the mountain. They're like fired up. I remember the first time I got the blessing of seeing my husband run a marathon race. I was in Little Rock, Arkansas last December and I went to go visit Mel Mel. Shout out to Mel Mel. And we were, we were kind of hanging out together and me and Mel Mel and Harper, we made little signs to meet Tony at the finish line. Now, a marathon takes like four hours. So we waited till about an hour left. I was tracking him on an app. And when I finally saw, okay, great, he's got a couple miles left, we hightailed it to the finish line. And we sat in the rain holding up our signs under our little umbrellas uh, with a bunch of goofy little things like world's okayest runner. <laughs> and the other sign I had was, good news, you didn't come in last. <laughs> so I got to see the signs. And like, I have never ran a marathon. I've never done it. 
I, I don't run. I run my mouth, I run my business, but I don't run. <laughs> um, if you see me running, you should run because something is chasing me, okay? I do not run. So my expectation, I had never gone to a marathon race before, I'm sitting at the finish line, is I was expecting my ogre, my 6'4", 220 pound ogre, to like saunter through the finish line. Just like, like oh, oh. he just ran 26.2 miles. Why is it 26.2? Like is 26 not enough? Like seriously, like it's just like just add in another quarter mile for like good measure or like pain. Anywho, I'm there at the finish line and he comes around and I'm like gleaming of pride. Like he's ran like dozens of marathons and half marathons, but I'm just like, that's my baby. Like I'm so excited, right? And he comes through, he, the runner's high is real. Like he was just like, Rawr! I remember he saw me at the sign and he picked me up. He picked me up. He's like, oh, I'm like, your poor legs. Like, put me down. Right? I'm like, totally thinking. I don't think he could feel anything like, you know, knees down, right? Waist down. Like, it was just probably all just jelly at that point. But he was so fired up. He had so much energy throughout the rest of the day. We went, we walked all around town. We went out to eat. And we, we like, looked at different campuses. Some of the most um, famous campuses in Little Rock, Arkansas. And we're seeing all these sites. And I'm thinking that Tony's going to want to go, like, lay down. No, 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 no. Because he was in build mode. Building his energy, maintaining his fatigue. I'll tell you guys, last week, I worked out six days, I rested one. Do you have any idea which day I was the most tired? The rest day. I was like kicking myself, like, why didn't I just at least get on the treadmill for like an hour or like a half hour at least? Because building his energy. And I got to know, what is your mountaintop? What is your mountaintop? Nobody has ever fallen their way to the top of the mountain. You got to climb there. You got to push yourself. You got to build. There is an incline, right? You, ha you have to grow. I think about in kind of closing this, this conversation about showing up is that there are hard things ahead of you. In fact, there might be hard things right in front of your face right now. Obstacles financially, relationally, health-wise, maybe you're going through stuff, emotional, like things, you got something hard. I want to encourage you guys that you can do and you have to do the hard things. It's part of showing up. Tony and I got the blessing. Um, I went down in November and I spoke at Rob Speary's Mastermind. Um, you should put that as a goal list to just go to one of his masterminds is a couple thousand dollars and it's one of the best investments I've ever made. I've been to two now. So I got to speak at the, at both of them as a guest a keynote speaker. And so we went to Sedona and we decided to make a week of it. And because we're working from home, Tony's working from home, let's uh, get a hotel room for a week and have a blast. So we invited his sister out. We had this beautiful one bedroom suite with a pull out couch. We just had a blast together. Uh, Teresa's like our, I call her like our third wheel, but that seems so bad. Like I call her tripod. She's seriously the best human. I love her to pieces. Like I have the best um, sister-in-laws. Her and Jesse are amazing. Anywho, we decide on the day off to go and do a hike. And I had been to Sedona a ton of times, but I had never done the famous Devil's Bridge hike. How many guys have ever heard of that hike or seen it? It is probably one of the most beautiful hikes in America. And it's one that's like accessible. Like there's a few other ones that are very beautiful, like in Zion National Park, but like they're, I mean, really difficult hikes. So this one, like anybody can really do it. And the hike kind of starts off pretty non-eventful. You actually walk for like, mm, I don't know, like two miles like two miles and it's kind of sandy and rocky and then you go get up to this one part and it's like just a 400 foot hike up nothing crazy and then you see the bridge and the bridge is about a six foot wide rock that juts out and across from the bridge is where you walk up so what you do you have to walk up walk around and then you have to saunter out onto this little tiny platform where the people, your friends or strangers have your phone and they take a photo of you on this rock bridge, this arch, with all the scenic view of Sedona behind you. The red rocks, the green trees, the blue skies. It is absolutely picturesque. Now, I 
One problem, I'm terrified of heights. Correction, I'm not terrified of heights, I'm terrified of falling. <laughs> I'm terrified of falling to my death and being in pain. Like that's way more terrifying than the actual height part. And I remember getting up there and as soon as I saw it, I'm even sweating right now. My hands are sweating, my pits are sweating. Like I'm thinking about this moment. Cause I got up there and it was a busy sunset and there was a probably about a five or 10 minute wait of people because it takes a minute or so to walk around and go get on the bridge, take the photos, then walk back. And you do this one by one or group by group. And so while we were waiting there, while we were waiting there, I was watching these people and a few of them, like a few, like kind of like slipped a little, like as they're walking and I'm like, I'm across from the bridge. I'm like, Ugh! I'm like, no. Like, oh my God, I can't do this. I can't do this. I'm looking at Tony and Teresa. I'm like, I can't do this. They're like, oh God, she's chicken it out. I'm like, I can't do this. And so I'm like turning around. I'm like not even facing the bridge. I'm not even looking at people go out there anymore. I'm like, I can't, I cannot even look at it. Cause I was, I have, I have photos of me nearly barfing. Like I'm telling you guys, I was all up in my fear. I was all up in my feels. It was terrible. But I think all the time, I have to do the hard things because I ask you to do the hard things. How can I ask you to face your fears when I'm not willing to face my own? Now, I'm not going to be crazy and like swim with sharks or like I'm not going to jump out of a perfectly good airplane, but like a little bridge that everyone else just walked on. Clearly, I must. If it's there, I must. If I have to, I must. If it's hard, I must. And I remember when it was finally our time. And I remember just literally looking down at my feet, not looking over to the cameraman, uh, we know across the bridge. I'm like walking out with Tony. I think I almost broke his knuckles, squeezing his hand so tightly. We finally got to the little picture area and we turn around. You don't look down. You don't look left. You don't look right. You're on this little platform. It's like a plank to death. And then you look over to the photographers and they're ready to take your photo. And I, at this point, I am not, I'm having an out of body experience, <laughs> out of body. Like I'm like, I was less concerned about falling at that moment. I was more concerned about all the oxygen leaving my brain and passing out because that much emotion was going through my body. And then the stranger who's taking our photo yells, good, got it, turn around. Because you want to get a photo with you looking at the view, right? So it's not just looking at the camera, right? You want to turn around and you want to look at Sedona. Like, put your arms up, right? So I do the slowest turn in the history of all turns. Like, hanging on to Tony slowly. Like, trying not to die. I mean, I've, I don't think I've, I've been that scared in a really long time. I got to show you guys this photo that they got of us. And now it's a really, they're far away. So I had to zoom in to show you what I wanted to show you. Do you guys see me grabbing his shirt? Do you guys see the knuckles, like white knuckles of me? That is me holding on to my groom. Like, dear Lord, I am terrified at this moment. And so they got it. And then I literally, I don't know what happened. I scampered off the bridge. I left Tony. Oh, no, Teresa came up. We took a threesome photo. And then I left him. I booked it. I was like, bye. Okay, got it. Got the photo up. I'm done. Instagram it. Sayonara. And then they took some sibling photos. All of a sudden, I was back by the photo takers, and they were still on the bridge. I was like, I don't know what just happened. I totally blacked out. I was terrified. You're going to be faced with hard things in 2021. What is the hard thing in front of you? Here's my promise to you. You can do it. Just grab our shirt. You can do it. Just grab our shirt. I need you and you need you and your family needs you to show up. You know what to do. You know what to do in this business. It is not a matter of ignorance. It is a matter of becoming world class. It's a matter of working hard. It's a matter of bringing up and showing up with a ante to play, with posture, with energy, with preparation and commitment. Are you ready to show up?